Now, the Midwest is beginning to heat up. One of the longest running baseball rivalries continued today in the Windy City, with the Bandits put some more of a beat down on Peoria today. Well, Clinton and the River Bandits are going to get it on tonight at 7 o'clock here at Modern Woodman Park. But the show before the show is going to happen with the superstars. Well, thanks, Jay. This is the oldest high school football rivalry in the state of Illinois. Moline and Rock Island here tonight in Rock Island. This is the 112th edition, and I'm here tonight with Rock Island head coach Vic Boblett. Vic, this is your 20th edition as a head coach. Talk to me about the pageantry and the intensity that this rivalry brings. And, you know, while I was doing this little story story, uh, Harry Canary ambushed me and gave me a little silly string. But you know what? I now have more hair during this broadcast than I had before the broadcast started. Reporting live from Modern Woodman Park, Preston Mitchell, CBS4 Sports. It was announced today that the River Bandits will open their best of three Western Division playoffs against Kane County on the road beginning Wednesday. Game two will be at Modern Woodman Park Thursday and game three if necessary in Davenport again on Friday. Could the Clinton Lumber Kings playing a deciding game five tonight take the Midwest League title in Ohio? The Iowa Hawkeyes football team hosted 10th ranked Wisconsin today with a lot on the line, including the upper hand in the Big Ten standings and the Heartland Trophy, which goes to the winner of this contest. The college football bowl season is just around the corner, and the Illinois and Iowa squads are going to the postseason. The Fighting Illini wound up with a 6-6 six six record after their defeat to Fresno State last Friday night, and the Hawkeyes go into their bowl with a 7-5 and five ledger. I'm, yeah. I'm a hockey guy tonight, yeah. Conchetta, and I do have teeth. You know, that's the difference. A lot of guys in hockey don't have teeth. I have mine. No yeah. dentures yet. Well, Jay, we started with the Western Big Six team, and we're going to continue with that. United Township went to Galesburg tonight. Let's just break it down and get to the highlights. Now, in tonight's Go For It, I was put to the test in a way I had not been in a long time. And the results? Well... Conchetta, did you see what A.J. Hawk just did there on the monitor? That's what football season means. Even preseason preparation is getting ready to start mashing some heads. Uh, Guaranteed $12 million this year. Not bad. Bumped up to $16 million with the possibility with incentives of getting $20 million. So he played the fiddle with dexterity. <laughs> well, Oliver had a chance to clinch a postseason berth tonight. Could they achieve that goal on the home turf of Moline? Now, the Iowa Hawkeyes football team hosts 10th ranked Wisconsin Saturday in a huge Big Ten affair at Kinnick Stadium. Iowa quarterback Ricky Stanzi was named the Big Ten's Offensive Player of the Week as well. While confident, the team is cautious in its approach to the Badgers. It's a losing culture. You can't change the culture of losing until you mentally get prepared to win, and that's where it needs to start with Mike Quaddy, getting these guys mentally prepared to go out each day to play. The Wisconsin Badgers are headed to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California on January 1st to take on TCU. Prophetstown native and head coach Brett Bielema had a feeling this season would indeed be special. You know, Iowa, a real strong defensive mm -hmm. team, one of the more physical teams that you'll see in the nation. They kind of hold the upper hand. They are undefeated in the Big Ten right now. If Wisconsin goes down Saturday, their chances of getting to a major bowl are probably cooked. Quinn really knows how to keep guys in shape. Reporting from Amarillo, keep the pace up. Preston Mitchell, News Channel 10 Sports. You know, what, what can you say? It reminds me of a Little League squad that just got the beat down. You know, it's like a, the father standing over the child and just giving it to him. <laughs> Watson performs each Saturday here in Canyon before thousands of people. However, there's one fan in particular whose cheering is sorely missed. Yes! Football is here, and I know I'm ecstatic to have it back on the air. I gotta admit, this victory is great for the school, great for the community, and you know what? I'm gonna give the fans a little chance to say something. Hello! <laughs> I can't put the victory in the words any better. What about the folks behind me? What do you think? It was a beatdown of monumental proportions tonight for the black and gold of Bushland. The Falcons took care of River Road 48 to nothing. Defense dominated, offense was superb. What more can you say? Let's just break it down and get to the highlights. Well, like one of the athletic commercials says, we must protect this house. And the Clovis Wildcats did just that tonight. Coach. Over 300 yards of total offense, you allowed Paladero 90 yards. Talk to me about your game plan and how it came to fruition. Well, they don't call this the longest city football rivalry for nothing. Amarillo and Paladero High is meeting for the 52nd time tonight here at Dick Bivens Stadium. Does this look like a man who needed heart surgery? Is this the look of a runner who needed major knee surgery? 
I love it <laughs> because mainly because there aren't that many runners in my age group. Well, I started back in 1982. I wish I'd have started when I was young. <laughs> Geraldine Alt and Jim Wilson are actually enjoying their later years a lot more than they expected. I've been a physical therapist for 19 years. I've been here at BSA for 10 years. Chris Hill has the outpatient therapy services at BSA Hospital in Amarillo. Clients of all ages come to Hale for physical therapy, but it's his patients who use sporting activities as a major form to heal their bodies. Rehabilitation really does go well for the patients. And don't let this guy fool you. He's not a casualty of the rehabbing cycle. Alt and her husband have won various medals from competitive running, but after a major knee injury, needed help to get her old form back. She spotted the problem right away. She said, I think you have a torn meniscus. And so she sent me to get an MRI, and they confirmed it was a torn meniscus. <laughs> In fact, Alt had a torn meniscus and a cyst on the back of her knee. That's when the jack of all trades and therapy took over. Those people that are, that are athletic and, and highly active are motivated. We can have little kids on up to you know, people's, people in their 70s, 80s or 90s. We have, a, we have a group of people that have been through cardiac rehab who continue to come in their maintenance program. A lot of people that are in their 60s, 70s and 80s. Which brings us to Mr. Wilson, who had five bypass heart surgery, but began playing his usual tennis after just two months of bed rest. I wouldn't say that I play any better, but, but uh, I feel good doing it and I'm not having any problems with the, with the playing of the tennis. The marvels of modern medicine, plus the will to live a productive lifestyle in a person's advanced years, help make the rehabilitation cycle a pinnacle of success. <laughs> <laughs> Reporting from Amarillo, Preston Mitchell, News Channel 10 Sports. Ah, summer camp, a tradition like no other. Summer camps were a time of fun, a time of reflection, a time of joy. We listened to our director intently, gaining infinite knowledge from our time spent amongst many faces. The director brings others who preach his message of discipline, attentiveness, diligence. Well, we're spending a lot of time working on shooting and uh, other fundamentals are passing and dribbling. I know, coach. Fundamentals, fundamentals, and, uh, fundamentals. Blah, blah, blah. Well, I went to the Canyon Future Champions uh, girls basketball camp to ask the really hard-hitting question. Five or six years. You're not in a witness protection program? <laughs> no. You're really Jasmine Williams, yes. not on house arrest? No. 14-year-old twins, are you double trouble? Yes. <laughs> when you guys go out on dates, do you try to switch your boyfriends and fool them? I'm not allowed to go on dates. <laughs> Who have you dunked on? Uh, <laughs> Liar. That's what I thought. Are you going to dunk on me? Yeah. <laughs> Don't even think about it. Do you have a husband that you left behind? No. Can you spell basketball? B-A-S-K-E-T. No. <laughs> B-A-L-O. Yeah. No. Oh, you blew it. Do you have a husband that you left at home? No. Who shoots better between you? I don't know. We're equal. You know, don't you? We're even. You called me at home and said I can shoot better. <laughs> Whatever. I don't even know your number. <laughs> Thank goodness. Then I got the challenge of my life. One camper went down with the quickness, and I was very happy. Then another challenged me. Oh. Then the twins tried to take me down. But my jumper took over. I couldn't stop everybody, but I had a terrific day. <laughs> Reporting from Kenya, <laughs> Preston Mitchell, News Channel 10 Sports. It was announced today that the River Bandits will open their best of three Western Division playoffs against Kane County on the road beginning Wednesday. Game two will be at Modern Woodman Park Thursday, and game three if necessary in Davenport again on Friday. That's Kylan, Tanya, and Kiara from Muscatine enjoying today's final game. The Chiefs are already up 1-0 in the third when the bases are loaded and Matthew Serta hits this shot to the gap in right center. One run is in, two runs are in, and the bases are cleared on Serta's double. 4-0 Peoria, and the Chiefs took the finale 
by a 9-4 to four count. And Burlington edges Clinton in their season finale, but a hearty congratulations to the Lumber Kings, who clinched a playoff berth as well as open against Cedar Rapids on Wednesday. The White Sox visiting Detroit today. 2-2 tie in the fourth when Juan Pierre hits this sinking liner to center field, and it falls. Andrew Jones will score, and the White Sox go on top, 3-2. Down 4-3 in the eighth, pinch runner Brett Lillibridge just gets under the tag to steal second. And he will get home when Alexi Ramirez gets this clutch base hit to left field. And we're tied again, this time at four. Still tied at four the tenth when Alex Rio singles to center and advances pitch runner Alejandro De Anza all the way to third. Next up is A.J. Pruszynski, and he'll go the opposite way for a base hit. De Anza crosses the plate and the White Sox go up five to four. Now reliever Chris Sales is gonna get Johnny Damon to fly out for the final out, and the White Sox get their seventh consecutive victory on this 10 game road trip with the 5-4 win in 10 innings. The Cubs hosting Houston today, you better sit down for this one, Conchetta. You sit down too. Cubs reliever Marcos Mateo with a strikeout in the seventh for out number two, and he serves up some special K to end the inning. A 4-4 tie in the eighth when Giovanni Soto goes deep to left field and is on to Waveland Avenue. His 17th of the year with a winning margin in the Cubs' 5-4 win. And in Milwaukee, the Cars hung on to defeat the Brewers. An Iowa senior running back, Packy O'Meara, has been named Big Ten Special Teams Player of the Week following his team's 37-7 season opening win over Eastern Illinois. O'Meara's blocked punt and 42-yard touchdown return extended the team's lead to 21-0. The 5'11", 200-pound running back also had four carries for 34 yards. I'm upset you showed my Houston Astros losing. It's okay, Conchetta. They've done a lot of that this year. Uh, you know, the, the Cubs have had their tough times this year. They're nearly 20 games behind, but the Astros have seemed to, you know, bottom them out. Even. They're having a hard time. Everybody's retiring. What can I say? You know what? Well, you do have a player going to the Hall of Fame probably in two or three years. Uh, you know, and you know, the Major League Baseball is kind of at a crossroads. You have attendance. You know, people are still going to games. You know, probably the, the quality of times isn't as good, but you have pennant races. The White Sox, seventh in a row, and they're in this 10-game road trip. They've stolen the last two games, and they are trying to make a push to get to that playoff. Get under it. Get under it. 